Welcome to the Healers Cafe, conversations on health and healing with Dr. Mano. And welcome to the Healers Cafe. And today I have with me Jane Karasek Hogan, and she is an engineer who has become a health coach. When she developed crippling rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease in 2016, Jane applied her engineering skills to redesign her life and achieve optimal health with food and lifestyle choices. Her research led her to functional medicine, addressing root causes of illness to find long lasting healing that supports the body, mind and, um, and spirit. So that is fascinating because <laughs> my first question is, did you always know you wanted to be a healer of some sort? Not at all. <laughs> Clearly. Not at all. <laughs> I, but you know, it's funny. So, uh, well, I, I, I came from a long line of engineers and was really encouraged to do engineering. And so I did and enjoyed it. But I, re I think I always did have this um, interest, I think, in, in the healing arts. Like, for example, I did, you know, I did a Reiki training. I'm, I'm a level two Reiki practitioner. And um, so I was always interested in, in this and acupuncture and all these alternative medicines. So I think I didn't think I was going to be going down this route, but I, here I am. I found myself. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, well, first of all, do you mind discussing a little bit your journey with, um, with rheumatoid arthritis and what, how it impacted what you were doing and then what you tried to do to, you know, <laughs> to improve your, your lot <laughs> in health and life. Um, yeah, let's go a little bit more into that because I think health is often the thing that changes people, you know, as I said. Really? Yeah, I think, you know, well, if you don't have your health, you really don't have much. So when, when, when a health condition kind of smacks you in the face, it makes you take stock of things and, and reevaluate things. Not that I was there that like in the initial, initial point, it came on very quickly. I had just come through um, a really emotionally stressful year. My mother had died suddenly and there was, you know, things, things going on with that. And um, so really quickly, I started just getting this joint pain that would, you know, it, it was in my shoulder first and my arm had to go in a sling. And then the next day it was the other shoulder and that arm had to go in a sling. And it kind of started migrating. Um, it went from my shoulders. Uh, next thing it was my feet. And I just thought, oh, my feet are really sore. I guess I need orthotics. I'm 50 years old now. So I got orthotics and then it was my elbows, my hands, my jaw, and my knees started to swell right up. And that was really quite bad because I could hardly walk. And, uh, and my hands were so swollen and tight, like I couldn't make a fist. And I couldn't like, you know, squeezing a shampoo bottle was something I couldn't do. I was just sort of not able, starting to be not able to look after myself. And so it, it happened that that was in a really short period of time, like about three months, mm -hmm. I went from being nothing to, you know, almost disabled. Oh, wow. So that was quite quick. And um, I, I guess I was, I was just not able to do much. And I was just lying there one day and I, it wasn't diagnosed at this point, but I, I was, you know, consulting Dr. Google and <laughs> kind of was figuring this might be an autoimmune thing. I hadn't even really heard of rheumatoid arthritis before, but I, I was starting to piece it together with, um, with the information I was finding on the internet. So I wasn't diagnosed, uh, nothing, you know, my, my doc, my family doctors, there was no, nothing showing up on my blood work, but she made an appointment for me to see a rheumatologist. Now I live in Newfoundland in Canada. It takes six months to see a rheumatologist. So I had a bit of time. And so, uh, my doctor mentioned that food sometimes can trigger joint pain, which I thought was absolutely crazy because I thought food has nothing to do with your joints. <laughs> Um, but I was really in a bad way. So I just, I just decided I had to do something like I just, 
I, I was, I had the freedom years coming up. My husband and I were looking forward to retirement. Our youngest child was just finished high school. So, you know, we we're just coming up to an empty nest in the freedom years. Like I have to do something and figure this out. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm a problem solver. That's what engineering, the engineering background is, right? It's right. problem solving. So I was like, okay, this is my project to manage and I have to figure this out. Mm-hmm. So I started with food. And I started getting, a, you know, a little bit better and I started researching some more. And so I just started going down this whole road of trying different things, you know, sleep, meditation, all these different things. Mm-hmm. And so along the way, I did discover functional medicine. And um, I, for, I think for myself first, I thought I'll just, I wanted to tell people about these changes and how lifestyle could help. And uh, people don't, weren't very open <laughs> to it. It doesn't go over very well at parties. <laughs> no, it's interesting. Like, before you go on, actually, let, let's go into that a little bit. Because, I mean, here's, I mean, you had no, nothing to lose or gain. I mean, from sharing it with people, you're just sharing because that's your experience. But people mm. are, are very hesitant to this kind of information. So how did you deal with that? <laughs> or what did you... What I, I found it really, uh, really frustrating because I would see people eating yeah. things, which then by this time I knew, you know, inflammatory foods are com- what people commonly eat is, you know, often very inflammatory. And, and I you know, wanted to tell them and I wanted to shout it off the rooftops and it, it just, um, you know, people don't want to hear it. So that was, that was Anything. kind of. They don't want to hear it because they don't want to change or they, they don't want to change. Yeah. I, I remember saying to someone, a friend of mine, and he had, uh, he, he was waking up with, you know, joint pain and, and trigger finger, you know, he called it. And I said, you know, what if you tried this, just try it for a week and see what happens. And he was like, if I have to not eat bread again, I just as soon not live. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, not everyone <laughs> wants to make changes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because it's almost like when you have no choice <laughs> to do something. I mean, still, many people in your situation would just go, right? Because that's a solu- it's a solution. It only mm. manages symptoms. But yeah. they would just take, you know, anti-inflammatories and then go down the entire cascade of all <laughs> that can happen when you choose that route, you know, without, mm-hmm. making, without realizing it, I think. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's interesting. So for you, it was like a lucky situation. Uh, you couldn't get an appointment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you used your skill set and you really looked through, mm-hmm. you know, step by step. So when you started, and we'll go further, I want to know the whole trip, but I want, I want the details. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how did you come to, I mean, you looked that foods could be inflammatory. I guess that's the first thing just by Googling. And then how did you engineer this plan? What was your, like, yeah, explain kind of your mindset in this. <laughs> well, I think, first of all, I think I made the decision. And, and I had been reading about the medications and I knew the side effects, which, you know, weren't pretty. Um, they can limit your life. You could get cancer, all these things. So I, I really didn't want to go down that route if I didn't have to. And and the, the other thing I did, I, I, so I made a decision that I was going to do everything I could. So that was number one, I think. And number two was I started researching other people that had had this and had healed naturally. So I also developed a belief that it would work. So I think those things, you know, really made a big difference. And that's part of the reason why I'm so outspoken about my journey is I want other people to see that it's possible so that they can get a belief because mindset is huge. Yeah. If you, you know, if you believe it's going to work, you know, you will take steps to make it work. If you don't believe it'll work, it probably won't. And, you know, we know about the placebo effect and how this works all the time. The mind is very powerful. Mm-hmm. But, but it's it, the way you're referring to it, and I think this is um, probably one of the things that you, why you, you're an excellent coach. It, it's, I think it's first, you need to make the decision 
and you base your decision on on the available information i guess right or how do you or did mm -hmm. you have a gut feeling or how did you make that first decision i think it was a combination of things so i it was i i just knew that my life wasn't meant to be like that. I, I just felt that inside. And I, I don't think I'm any different than anyone else. You know, people would sit there and say, why me? I don't deserve this. Those kinds of things. Um, and so I think that, um, that, so that was key. And also I had a really strong why. So that's another thing. We, all, we always talk about people need their why. Like, why did I want this? I wanted this because we had spent, my husband and I, you know, I was a working mom. I gave everything to my kids. And then this retirement was our freedom years. And that was gone. Like, I just couldn't see how any of that was going to happen. So I had a really strong why for making this happen. Mm -hmm. So that, that's key. And, and I use that with clients as well. You know, right. let's, let's really see why this is important to you. Because if it's not that important, you can't stay the course. Because right. lifestyle changes our heart. Yes. And, and, and then belief. Um, so because people say, oh, belief, it, it's, it's, it, it's important. But it's like, oh, that's what makes it woo-woo or strange. But I, I would like you to speak to the what gave you the belief that it could work what was the the resources mm. i'm really using the best of your engineering <laughs> mind i'm breaking it right apart yeah <laughs> but what was it that that gave you the belief that it could apply to you too well so i i found other people on the internet and i listened to podcasts you know like yours i started getting books from uh, medical doctors that were practicing functional medicine. So I knew that they were saying it had worked. So I like Dr. Amy Myers, Terry mm -hmm. Walls, some of these other doctors. So I, and I, you know, I'm a science girl as well. So I, I wanted the science as well. Absolutely. And I, and I still like that. I love blending the science with the spirituality. And uh, the, and the other thing I did as mm -hmm. well was I started tracking things and I charted and I graphed. <laughs> so I would literally make, you know, Excel spreadsheets and create graphs. And I could see that it was working. And when you see results like that, you, you know, it does help with the motivation to keep going. Right. I also have a really high um, self-regulation capacity. Mm -hmm. So um, it's interesting. I learned this when I went on in, in my coaching course, we learned about character, character strengths. And this, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the VIA character strengths. No, they no, identify no, no. yeah, 24 no. different character strengths that are, you know, seen as strengths across all cultures. And um, I happen to be really high in one that's called self-regulation. So that's, you know, saying you're going to do something and sticking with it and following through mm -hmm. with a lot of people that tends to be a little bit lower. So I think I had a natural propensity to stick with things mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that definitely helped because I didn't have a coach. Right. I was just figuring this out as I went. Mm -hmm. um, so I think when, when pe most people, someone's self-regulation is lower, we have to come up with ways and methods to help them stick with the plan. To be more, yeah, accountable to yourself, basically. Yeah, yeah. To remind you of your why and <laughs> to yeah. be motivated, yeah. Very, so I, what, I was really lucky with that. <laughs> and what was the chart? Via VIA? VIA uh, character strengths. So I think if you just type in, character. yeah, character strengths. Okay. You, there's a free survey online, and you can do it and see what <laughs> your what your They'll, they'll rank your character strengths based on a series of questions. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, because I was thinking when you're speaking, I, I definitely have, um, I, I must have a similar character strength <laughs> because I, I, I know I, you know, I've gone through the, the process and, and documented less so in the sense of that way, but internally documented. 
how am I feeling? How, you know, this constant checking in, am I, am I moving in the right direction? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it is interesting to know that character strength because that really can help people understand whether they, they would do better with some support, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I think when you don't use it yourself, you don't realize how important it is if it's not your natural mechanism. You know, I'm thinking like in our, in our clinic, um, as naturopathic doctors, we, we worked collaboratively. And when we talk about nutrition, it's like, well, you just, you know, just shop on the outside lanes, avoid the middle, you know, and then here's a few things. It's like, that did not work for a lot of people. They really needed like the list of what they can buy, the mm -hmm. how that they can cook it, the, you know, really being told, and then like a checklist, did they do it or did they not, you know? And, and it was amazing. I couldn't understand, I mean, I understand it, but I couldn't understand it. Like not in the feeling mm -hmm. sense of like, you know, this is, it's so important that, that part of it, you know, mm -hmm. so it's very interesting. Okay, so let's go back to your journey. So you, at this stage, um, so you were reading about functional medicine and what had you already achieved simply removing the foods that you were sensitive to? Well, a lot of my inflammation had gone down. Like I know my knees, which had been quite swollen, right like golf balls kind of sitting on my knees, um, that, that inflammation went way down. So I, I, I kind of went, I would say about 70%, but I was kind I had plateaued and that's when I, in the readings that I was doing, um, actually it was the, uh, Dr. Amy Myers book. Um, it's called the, <laughs> I got it right here. Uh, the autoimmune solution. Right. Uh, so in there, it said, you know, if you're following this way of eating and you, and you get stuck, then it could be one of these things. And uh, so it could be, you know, a yeast overgrowth, parasites, or, or small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So with this information, I went to my family doctor and said, I'd like to be tested. I kind of suspected that it was either parasites or, or the small intestine bacterial overgrowth because she, there's a little checklist in this book. And uh, so I, I asked my family doctor, you know, could I be tested for this? And she's an amazing doctor because she said, I can't, in our system, I can't test that for you. You'll, you'll need to see a naturopath. <laughs> So, um, so that's what I did. And so I started looking in at the Institute for Functional Medicine, trying to find one in my area. There isn't one. So I found one online who would practice telemedicine. And uh, so I went through a series of tests. Turned out I did have a severe case of small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Treated that. Took about eight months to get that cleared up. And um, so that, you know, took me to another level. Mm -hmm. And so I kept on, you know, all these layers. And then I got to another level where I realized, okay, I'm plateauing again. The SIBO's cleared up. You know, what's, what's going on now? And I realized at that point that, um, that I was still viewing myself as uh, being broken. Mm. And so I really had to do this big mindset shift and see this illness as, as and this is the work of, um, of Byron Katie. You've probably mm. heard of Byron Katie, oh, yeah. where it, it's happening not to me, but for me. Mm -hmm. So then it was another whole thing. Well, if this is happening for me, what is this meant? To, what am I meant to figure out? And then I started realizing, okay, there's a whole lot more I need to look at in my life, not just the food and not just sleep and not just um, meditation. I really started to look at everything. What is causing me stress in my life? And, uh, I, you know, I realized there was relationships that were causing me stress. There was my work, which I did love, but I realized... I had this new passion in me now 
and I wanted to do something about it. So that was what started me becoming, I thought, well, I'm, I was at that point 52 years old, and I thought, I can't, you know, I'm not going back to school now for five, six years, so what can I do that I would love to do that's really part of now who I am with this illness? And so that's why I decided to become a functional medicine health coach. Mm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it's great. I mean, it's, it, I love the way that you, you could really break it down your, your own story, you know, and, and it just, it, it makes so much sense. And so let, let's go a little bit more in now with coaching, because I, I really feel that that's a, um, in health, especially, and there's lots of business coaches and, you know, we could talk about that too, but I think let's talk about health coaching because <laughs> I feel like that's the, the most, um, under, not undervalued, but underestimated benefit to a clinic. And so where do you see that health coaches can really serve? Like what, what's the, um, mm. Well, I think, you know, you probably know this, that you've, you're busy as a, you know, as a practitioner, you're busy, you've got to see a lot of patients and probably don't have the time to hold the hand of the person as they need to make these lifestyle changes. So that's where a coach comes in. So, uh, I mean, I, I work mostly with people who just come to me directly uh, because of where I live, there's, there's not a lot of net, there's no naturopaths where I live right. <laughs> right in my, right in my town. Um, but I, in the way it would work in the, in that kind of model is the practitioner would see the patients diagnose, prescribe, you know, the lifestyle changes. And then the coach would help the person make these lifestyle changes because lifestyle changes aren't easy to make. And well, easier for me, it was hard for me and my self-regulation is high. So I can only imagine how hard it is for people when the majority of people, their self-regulation is quite low. Hi, this is a small commercial break. And for you to let me know that you're enjoying these conversations, please go one, to subscribe to my podcast. Number two, write a review because if you write a review on iTunes, more people know about this and I can help spread the work, my work, but the work of everyone else I'm interviewing. And number three, please sign up to my tips for your healing journey. And you can do that under www.drmanonbolliger.com slash tips. Thank you. Having a coach helps people because it gives them accountability. It gives them someone in their corner. It helps the person problem solve when, as you, you mentioned, like you, you have a plan, they don't follow through. The coach can really help the person dig into, well, why didn't it fall through and what supports can we put in place to, to make sure it doesn't fall through the next time. Mm -hmm. So, so what would you say, um, I, I, but that, why, what are the reasons that people, I mean, they understand it at this point that they, they need to make changes or is it that they don't sufficiently believe it? Or what can you say so far from what you've seen working with people are the, the sticky points that really mm. need that um, help? Yeah. So the sticky points, sometimes it's just knowing what to do. Like we have, we are so overwhelmed with information. There is no problem finding information, mm -hmm. but it's weeding through it and finding out what's right for them. And honestly, like everybody is different. So it's trying to figure out what is right for this person, you know, mm -hmm. what their particular physiology and their lifestyle, what's going to work for them. So it's very personalized. Um, so yeah, I, I forgot where the question was now. Yeah, no, like where are the sticky points? Because I mean, yes. let, let's say they see a naturopathic um, physician or they see um, a functional medical doctor. They're told, okay, you know, now avoid all, let's say, I'm just going to go with the generals, you know, uh, all gluten, mm -hmm. for example. And then they're on, you know, um, they're, they're getting rid of the overgrowth or SIBO or what else it, it might be. You know, like you said, the plateaus mm -hmm. do happen. Um 
and then they might be stuck at the 90%, but there's still the mindset piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So like there's many places in which you need, you could need support. And I guess what I was asking is where does it typically fall apart? Where mm -hmm. is it that people, you know, break mm -hmm. down and then go, Oh, well, whatever. I'm just yeah. going to have that, you know, that, whatever it is, <laughs> that big sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and <jams. that's, laughs> Yeah. Oh, just, you know, it's so good, right? All that stuff yeah. is so good. And we're, we're really driven to, you know, we're programmed to want some of that stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so sometimes it's just giving them the right information and that isn't always enough, even when they know what they're supposed to do. So I really like to get behind it and get into the mindset. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to really explore the why. I like to also look at how, what their thoughts are. Mm -hmm. So I like people to really start noticing their thoughts. So creating awareness about what their thoughts are. And because as, as you know, like the thoughts drive your feelings, which drive your actions or inactions, which then give you results. So if you want to change your results, you need to go back to the thoughts. So I like to kind of get them working on thoughts. I like journaling. I like using uh, meditation and things to really start calming down because a lot of people uh, with autoimmune conditions, it's very directly related to stress, as you probably know. Mm -hmm they're spending a lot of time in this fight or flight mode. So right. it's really getting them to, to relax. So even things as simple as, you know, slow down while you're eating, turn off the electronics mm -hmm. and uh, look at people and talk to people and enjoy your food and, and laugh while you're eating. I mean, that's even such a simple thing, but it's very profound because it affects the digestion as well. And right, yeah. And with autoimmune conditions, digestion, poor digestion is often goes hand in hand with it. So, so I, I really like getting, I love getting into the mind body medicine stuff. So it's a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah. No, it's, a, it's a huge, um, I mean, yeah, I've noticed it to be absolutely uh, important. And it's funny because I, this is making me think out loud here, but um, because I didn't clue into coaching. I've been in practice, you know, 30 years, right? And I didn't clue into the need to offer coaching to people until the last like five years where I kind of went, oh, there are things, you know, missing. But one piece that um, I did, I, because it's a big piece of what I do, I do something called Bowen therapy, oh, yeah. which puts the body into parasympathetic. It sort of allows this natural auto regulation and, and when i'm listening to your steps i i'm thinking that's a piece that people really can do and maybe why i didn't see it as clearly you know or some of it was answered because they were able to to not be so stressed mm -hmm. so stressed your brain works better Right? Yeah. And yeah. everything works better. Right. So then, you know, if on top of that, then you have a coach for the, the keeping you accountable and that you're, you're really maximizing your, your results, right? Cause you know, it all comes together. I think it, it's just, I think we put it together slightly differently <laughs> when, mm -hmm. when I'm looking at your, your, um, yeah, your, your system of, working through to support people but it's uh anyway it's very it's fascinating <laughs> it is yeah. and you know i think a lot of people think some of this stuff is sort of woo woo you know that it's it's mm -hmm. uh yeah that's not really science-based but what i like to bring it back to the science and you know not that i'm a doctor and not that i understand all the physiology but from everything i've read when we are in this strict stress state, which most of you know people in our society are in most of the time, uh, when we're in that state, we're not healing. So I like to remind the cl my clients, like as much as you're doing all this other stuff, if you're not in this rest and digest, the parasympathetic mode, then yeah. you're not healing. Your exactly. healing is stopping. And so when they hear that, I'm like, okay, I've got to, <laughs> I've got to make sure I do and there's, this. There's 
plenty of science behind that. You know, that's the thing. There is. I think it's often that the science is there. The science is there to back things up, but there is a, and on both sides, right? I mean, both sides, it's all one side. Science is science. It's, you know, do you know that it exists, you know, to really, to understand why you're doing what you're doing? And certainly that's that's a piece because most doctors are busy helping people they're not necessarily you know doing new research about what they're what they're doing mm-hmm. or getting you know really deeply looking into the science it there, it's almost like the science is there and we're catching up and we're ca- oh this is oh this makes sense now <laughs> you know so it's a lot it's very retrospective in some ways which is quite quite funny um but I think the the issue we were raising is also that, or at least that I'm raising, is is a, it's a paradigm difference in thinking that the body can heal. Yes, and that's what we're trained. We're trained to 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 know this, to see it, to witness. We understand why, on some mm-hmm. level. But we're still not God. We don't know all of the whys <laughs> that mm-hmm. it does. But we see this, you know, and I'm not talking about a religious God. I'm saying the universe, whatever one believes, just not to offend anyone. But but that's what we are, we're trained. Whereas I think in allopathic medicine, it, that's not the questions they're asked. And it's not really, it's not necessarily to understand that that's a possibility, they're looking for what is the drug that will manage the symptoms. Mm-hmm. And that's basically it. And I think that's why we have such a, a difference of, mm. um, of focus, right? Yeah, it's a total paradigm shift. You know, our whole conventional medicine system is what is the external solution to help this problem? Right. People aren't thinking the solutions within me. And it very much is within them. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. It's very empowering when people realize that they hold the solution and uh, they can, you know, we, we know that it's genes that turn on um, as a result of the environment that causes a lot of these illnesses. So we've just got to change that environment. And for the most part, we are in control of our environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And once you realize that you are in control and that your body will heal given the right environment, it, it shifts everything mm-hmm. and it's so empowering. And that's one of the beautiful things I, I really love about this is seeing people move from feeling helpless and hopeless yeah. to feeling empowered and ready to take this on for the rest of their lives. And they've got these tools that they, they can trust themselves, they can figure out, they can follow a procedure or, or do things, monitor, you know, they have awareness of their bodies and how their bodies are reacting, they can monitor things and then apply this to whatever else comes up in the future too. Mm, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, like the work of Bruce Lipton, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been around for ages. The research has been there. I mean, mm-hmm. I think it's, he, it's 50 years of practice now as a scientist, you know, but it's funny. Now you can start to get it on video and people are hearing this and going, oh my God, you mean we're not completely determined by our family history? No, not completely. <laughs> you know, something still ignites the, yes. the, the gene, something starts it. And the thing is, if that's true, then what can we do? to change the environment so that the body can go back. And we know that the brain has, you know, neuroplasticity. Well, cells regenerate, our gut lining regenerates, you know, so it it doesn't matter what our problem really is, as long as we, we understand that we can change and work with that, you know, and yeah, so I'm very hopeful um, for the future that way. How, How about yourself? Yeah, I think so too, because the word is getting out. We, we, we're, we're so connected now. And as you said, this is all available. There's YouTube videos, there's podcasts, there's books, there's, you know, the internet, there's so much available now that 
if people look, they will see it. They will start to find it. And, and then as more and more people, you know, heal using natural methods, I think word is just going to get out. And then, you know, then it starts to grow. Then it, it starts to grow that more people do have this belief. And if you, when you talk about Bruce Lipton, you know, lots of times just are, if you believe something, then you're, you know, everything will, will work that way. If you, if you believe it enough, because your cells respond to your thoughts and all that kind of thing. Yes. So, um, and then I think it might even shift, like people will have less and less. And I think this is even starting now, less and less belief that the medications will work. And then perhaps they won't work as much. <laughs> so it's really interesting. It's, it's fun to watch this and see how it's going. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, they've done the studies on, you know, like migraine medication, you know, giving it to two groups with uh, a different attitude of the, the doctor, you know, saying this is the latest and it looks really promising compared to, yeah, this, um, this just came out, but the research, we're not sure yet, it may work. So why don't you try it? You know, and they saw significant differences in results, you know, by being, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the way a situation is framed, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, yeah, the research is there for that. And I also feel like um, what what a lot of people don't realize when they're making that decision, if, if it's all in our mind, well, good, then do whatever you want. But here's the thing. Drugs do have a significant side effect. And so even if your mind can make you feel better taking a drug, your body still has another experience of the reality. It still has toxins in your body. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so you better talk to your liver and to your kidneys and to you know, all the cells in your body to deal with, you know, for chronic disease, you know, if, if it's an acute yeah. moment. I mean, I, I'm not anti anything to me, it's- no. um, Everything has its place. But, but the thing is, I don't think people, often the argument given against, oh, it's in your mind is, well, if it's in your mind, then I'll just do what's easiest. And some people, like you say, they'll fall back to, well, I like my bread or I like whatever it is. It's easier. But they, the consequences of the other choices are often not made as clear. It's not mm. top of mind, you know? So, I mean, in your case, it was. You had researched it. You you looked at the consequences and you thought, well, that's not really for me, right? But I think right. that's very important. Um, it's not equal just because it's in the mind. There are big differences in the impact of the body. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think it's easy. We live in a society too where it's, it's instant gratification. So sometimes making the changes are it takes longer than we might see with that instant relief but then the long-term consequences of some of the medications you know it you won't you're not going to see that right away but over time mm -hmm. you would see it so it's it's um it it's just a different way of looking at things and i think everyone needs to make their own decision but i, I know for me i'm just so thrilled that things worked out the way they they did and um and that i can help spread that word to other people now. Absolutely. And, and in your own health then at this point, are you, um, do you have any symptoms left or have you, has your body recovered fully or how, how are you doing with that? Well, I always say I'm still a work in progress. <laughs> There's, you know, I wouldn't say I'm not in full remission and I don't even know what that really means, but you know, when I met, when I, manage my life in a way that supports my body, then I'm asymptomatic. If I slip on things, so if I don't get enough sleep or if I start getting stressed or those things happen, then I, I will have flares or I'll get some inflammation again. So then that's my signal to me that, okay, my body's talking, I need to listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then go back to, well, what's, what am I doing now that's not supporting it? So I'm, I'm always, it's always on my mind that I need to put my, listen to my body and do what I can to provide the environment that my body needs so that I don't have those symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and, and 
here's just a thought <laughs> that's spontaneous. <laughs> but um, yeah, in my practice, I I, uh, I used also something that is questionable in the sense of um, there's a lot of negative um, uh, press for it currently, uh, which is homeopathy. I don't know if you've heard about homeopathic medicine, but mm -hmm. uh, I have certainly used it with many, many patients with autoimmune diseases. And, and I think one of the reasons, and I think you've co you've covered all the points, mind, mindset as well, and the last point, the ability to self-regulate, all of this is a whole picture. The thing is, what don't we know of the whole picture that's still impacting us? Right. And I think that's where I see um, medicines like that have an impact where the rational, logical mind of going through the, the, all the steps might help. And at least I've seen it in, you know, in patients that were my, uh, the clinicians might be doing certain things. I did find that in the, in the cases that were not resolved that way, that there, it was usually something a missing element that only became clear after uh, mm. working with homeopathy, which, um, you know, I mean, again, you have to be open. You have to try. <laughs> to yeah. see no, I love that. Out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'd love to come to your clinic. <laughs> it's actually closed. <laughs> oh. I, no, I'm not practicing anymore. I've, after 30 years, I decided I'm going to do more um, education, public education okay. and going through all that. And, you know, um, collaborating with other healthcare people, putting them together, um, having these discussions. So, you know, I, I felt that that's more the role I felt aligned at this stage, you know, that that felt right to me. Mm. Um, I definitely can refer and um, I will be, uh, I will be having interviews with, um, with homeopaths as well. That's definitely, there's so much bad press and why I don't know, <laughs> you know, it's such an ancient, uh, well, ancient 200 years compared to Chinese medicine, but it's, it's so scientific <laughs> in that mm -hmm. it really looks at every aspect of the person. Yeah. Right. Love that. It's just that we don't always know what that aspect means we can't attribute a meaning, but the plant or the mineral that produces that in a healthy person, th those symptoms, um, has its own meaning that we may not get, <laughs> you know, so it's like, it, it's bigger than what we, and you know, I'm comfortable with that. Mm. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think there is so much we don't know about the human body and our, well, not just the body, but all of the body, mind, spirit, all working together in conjunction with our physical environment. You know, we, we, we can't know it all. There's so much to no. discover. So yeah, I think definitely all, all different modalities of healing I, I, I'm interested in. Yeah. So we, we really don't know what the secret sauce is. We don't. And, and I think that the modesty um, has to be there. You know, that we, there is no, oh, like there is a best path possibly for one person, <laughs> you know, which has to be determined, like you say, by so many things, you know, what is the right path for that, that person and very individualized. But in the end, it's, um, it's so many factors that make the difference and so many possible therapies that might be the right one at the right moment, <laughs> you know, so yes. it's, it's, it's interesting. So did you have any last um, statement? Because we're, we're wrapping up here, but oh. anything you want to leave people with? <laughs> that went so quickly. It was so much fun. Uh, no, I just, I, I would just like to, if, any, if anyone is listening that has an autoimmune condition, just to know that there is a solution out there and you, you can heal and to just really start paying attention listening to your body and know that it's happening to teach you something thank you very much um, jane and um, great I'll, I'll let you know when we go when we go live okay thank you so much okay bye bye thank you for joining us at the healers cafe with dr manor for more information, go to drmanobolliger.com.